Hello, hello! It's nice to have you back at Learn As You Explore for another MBOT2 tutorial. In this video, we're going to dive into Python programming and implement, upload, and test our very first Python program for the MBOT2 robot. We will start with a simple program as we transition to Python. We'll take our distance measurement project that we built using block programming in a previous tutorial and convert it to Python code. We will also upload the Python program and test it out on our robot. Before we dive in, here's a quick way to support my work. If you're planning to get an MBOT2, you can use my Amazon affiliate link in the description. It won't cost you extra, but as an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Or if you just want to say thanks, there's a buy me a coffee link down in the description too. All right, let's jump in. We walked through the concepts of the ultrasonic sensor in the ultrasonic sensor intro video. So if you haven't watched that yet, be sure to go and watch that tutorial before proceeding. The link to that video is in the description. As long as you have some Python programming experience, you should be able to follow along this programming exercise. For example, if you know what import statements, variables, and functions in Python are, you should be good to go. If you don't have any experience with Python, you can learn from several resources here on YouTube. Just search for Python basics, and there will be several videos from other YouTubers that cover these basic concepts. Once you have that covered, come back here to continue. Let's first take a look at our block program that we built in our ultrasonic sensor intro video. This is a simple program that says that when button B is pressed, we will get the ultrasonic sensor distance print it on the CyberPy display, and move to a new line. Let's convert this block program to Python code. To do this conversion, we will need some reference documentation. Unlike in block programming, where we have the block categories on the left pane, when we get into Python land, we would not have something similar within the editor that shows all the functions that we can use. Instead, we will need to refer to some online documentation specifically the API docs by yuque.com. So what does API docs mean? It stands for Application Programming Interface Document. This is the document that lists all the functions that we can use in our program. This is similar to the block categories that we used in block programming, but instead of blocks, it lists all the Python functions that we can use. There are two web pages with relevant documentation. First is the CyberPy API docs page. This page contains APIs that help our program control elements of the CyberPy module. This can be things like events, display, audio, and many more. As an example, if you need the functionality of the when button A pressed block from the events block category, but want to implement that in Python, you should look into this document. The second document is the mbuild Python API docs page. Here, you will find APIs for sensors like the quad RGB sensor, ultrasonic sensor, ambient light sensor, and more. This document has more than just sensor APIs, but let's start there for now. We will explore more as needed by our future projects. I'll add links to both of these documents in the description. I highly recommend bookmarking them in your browser so that you can access them easily. We will be going back to these docs in almost every Python programming tutorial going forward. Let's now look at the APIs that are needed for this project. To do that, let's look at our block program and think of the block categories that we used when we were building them. The when button B pressed block was from the events block category. The print and move to a new line block was from the CyberPy display category. And finally, the ultrasonic distance to object block was from the ultrasonic sensor 2 category. As you would expect, the button B and print blocks relate to elements on the CyberPy. So we should look into the CyberPy Python API docs to find the APIs for these. For the ultrasonic sensor 2 API, since most sensor APIs outside of the CyberPy are in the mbuild Python API docs, we should look there to find the API for the ultrasonic distance measurements. Now let's head over to the documentation pages and find the APIs that we need. We are now in the CyberPy Python API document. From this document, we identified that we needed to find two APIs. 
First is the when button be pressed event block. Make sure that you have the outline enabled on the right hand side pane. If you don't see this, you may need to toggle the right side pane by clicking on this button. To find an event API, let's scroll down the outline and see if we can find events anywhere. Yes, we see events here, so let's click on that. Here, we see examples of how to use events. Events are designed to be decorators in Python. If you aren't familiar with decorators in Python, let's take this first piece of code as an example. The goal of this code is to turn the LEDs green as soon as the CyberPy starts up. Here, the event is the CyberPy starting up, and the action is to turn on the green LEDs. You can see the function called callback that defines the action, turn on the green LEDs. We want to call this function automatically when the CyberPy starts up, which is the event. The way to do this is by using the cyberpy.event.start decorator. To add a decorator, you go one line just above the function definition, and you start with an at symbol, followed by the name of the decorator. In our case, we want to do something when button B is pressed. We don't want to do it when the CyberPy starts. So we will have to find a different decorator that does what we want. Let's scroll through the list here to see if we can find one. Let's skip the first one, because that is when the CyberPy starts. Looking at the second one, this seems promising because it's saying when something is pressed. Now we want button B pressed, so we've got to see if that is supported by this API. How can we find that? Let's look at what we can pass into this function. Name is a string, and it is the name of one of the buttons or the joystick direction. So we're getting closer here. So we're looking for button B, and we see that button B is supported by this function, and this would be perfect for our use case. So we will use this decorator to detect the event when button B is pressed. Next, we need to find the API similar to the print and move to new line block. Since this is a display functionality, we can expect to find it under display in the outline. Let's click on display. We see two APIs that say print. So what's the difference between them? Print by default does not automatically force a new line, whereas println forces a line break, as is mentioned in the documentation here. Line break is just another way of saying a new line. So this API is what we will use for our project. Great, so now we have two out of the three APIs needed for our project. Next, let's go to the embed Python API docs and look for the last API that we need. Now we're in the embed API page. We're looking for the ultrasonic sensor distance measurement API. Scrolling through the outline once again, we see the ultrasonic sensor 2 section. Let's click on that. The very first API that we see here gives us the ultrasonic distance between an obstacle and the ultrasonic sensor. This is perfect for our project, so we'll use this API. Now let's update this page with the APIs that we chose. Awesome, now we're ready to start programming. Before we jump into programming, I want to mention that I was having trouble with the Python programming using the web editor. So from this video onward, I'll be using the mBlock desktop application. To download this desktop application from the mBlock website, click on download. Scroll down and select the version that is suitable for your computer. I'm running Windows, so I downloaded this version. Then follow the installation steps once the download has completed. This is the desktop app, and it looks very similar to the web version we were using in the previous videos, so this should feel very familiar to you. Let's first give our project a name. I'm going to call it Tutorial 11 Ultrasonic Python. And once we have that, we click outside and we renamed our file. Now let's add the mbot 2 device by clicking Add selecting the mbot2 robot and clicking on OK. 
Next, we'll switch to the Python mode by clicking on Python over here. We have our block program on the right side for reference. I'm going to first add a few comments to describe what I want the program to do briefly. First, we need to import any modules that are required. And then we're going to use the button B pressed decorator. So I'll say use decorator for button B press event. And finally, after that, we're going to define a function that prints the ultrasonic sensor distance measurement and moves to a new line. Now that we have these comments, you can clearly see the structure of the code and what needs to be done. For the imports, we need both the CyberPy and the mbuild modules. So we'll import CyberPy, comma, mbuild. The decorator that we chose to use from the API docs was the cyberpy.event.ispress decorator. So let's add that. We start off with the at symbol. So we say cyberpy.event.ispress. And the parameter that we want to pass is B so that we get button B. Now let's define the function. I want to call the function on button B press because this function will define what we do when the button B is pressed. Within our function, we want to print the distance and move to a new line. So we'll use the cyberpy.console.println API. And the parameter that we want to pass here is the ultrasonic distance measurement. To get the ultrasonic distance measurement, we'll use the embill.ultrasonic2.get. And optionally, you can pass the ultrasonic ID, which is one. If you have more than one ultrasonic sensor, this might be different. But if you have just one, like the standard mbot 2 robot, you can leave this as one. And that's it. Now let's upload the code and test it on the robot. To upload, First, make sure that you have the robot powered on and connected to your computer. Then let's switch to the upload mode. Click connect and select the COM port for your robot. Select connect. Now that we've connected, we can go ahead and click upload code. Wait for the upload to complete and voila, we're done now. Now that we've uploaded the code, let's go ahead and test it out on the robot. Let's first place an obstacle far away from the robot and press button B. We see that the distance reported is 44.9 centimeters. Now let's bring the obstacle closer. We now see that the distance reported is 8.6 centimeters. Finally, let's place the obstacle in between the two distances and we should see a distance reading which is in between the two as well we see a distance reading of 27.8 centimeters. Great, our program works as expected. Great job today. I know this was a smaller feature than in our previous programs, but I'm so glad that you're taking interest in Python programming. This will help us implement more advanced projects. You're now one step closer to working on more exciting projects, and I'm proud of you for putting in the effort. If you found value in this video, hit the like button and subscribe to learn as you explore for more MBOT2 tutorials. Here are some of my other videos that you may find helpful. Happy programming, and I'll see you in the next one.